Hi guys, welcome to another Pi and Bell art class. Uh, this week we're doing what we actually did in class, so we did this this week for an actual lesson. Uh, but I thought I'd do a video of it just to show you guys each of the steps to get this real soft focus coming into focus in the foreground picture of a football. Um, I wanted to also do something a little bit masculine because we do quite a lot of feminine stuff in our classes and it was a nice one for the boys. So the first thing we're going to do is buy some circular stickers. I got these circular stickers from eBay. They're just wall stickers made out of vinyl for if you're doing polka dots on your wall. And then we're going to mix up the colours of the kind of hazy background, which is the bushes in the background, and then the colours coming into the foreground, which is all those um, lovely kind of yellowy, orangey colours and the green of the grass. We're ignoring the ball at the moment because that's obviously behind the sticker. Um, that's going to be done later. So what we're doing is just making up a bunch of different colours. And I'm making up some natural greens. So instead of using my good good colour for the green, which is the um, turquoise and the lemon yellow, which makes a pure green with no interruption, we're actually putting some of the kind of more ready yellow in there so that it kind of makes it more of a natural green because we don't want that real vibrant green because it's not really the colour it is. Plus it's quite bluish in the background there so I'm using some of my kind of cooler blue with some of that um, yellow ochre as well and this will help me get that real dark pop in the background and then I'm just making up a bunch of different orangey red colours as well and some little bits of brown and I'm just going to do a real loose kind of first layer. Now what I want you guys to think about is not the details, don't look at the details, don't worry about details at this point you just want to chuck a load of colours in where you can see them. I either say kind of make your eyes go fuzzy or look at the picture from a real distance and you start getting an idea of how to create those kind of shapes without looking at any detail. And that's what we're going to put in at the moment. We're just kind of putting in the darks and lights. Also, there's quite a lot of kind of these white spots where the camera's out of focus, where the light's coming through in the background. But I'm going to put them in later by pulling the colour out, so I'm ignoring them kind of at the moment. I'm maybe leaving some spaces, but mainly I just want to get that colour in and not pay any attention to those kind of white bubbly bits that are going on. So remember this is your first layer. Do not get precious about it. Just kind of chuck a load of colour in, get some interesting patterns going on. It's the lovely thing about watercolour where it does that kind of crazy little splaying thing. We love that, so just let it do its own thing. Once I've done that top thing, I'm going to go straight in, not wait for it to dry, because the top kind of merges into the bottom in the picture. So I'm going to go straight in and almost put my water up to that water line. I think I just barely touched it on the right there, you can see. But I'm going to bring that colour right in when I'm coming in with the paint, so that it doesn't make it kind of mix in too badly. It doesn't make the whole yellow bit go green. And then I'm going to start bringing in those yellows coming in. And I am going to come back and touch all this up later, so again, don't be overly precious about it. All you're doing is following the colours, the basic colours. And then I'm going to put those little green spots in. And again, this is a natural picture. So if you get those grass spots in slightly the wrong place, nobody's going to know. So really don't beat yourself up about it. The thing you have to be a little bit more accurate on is the ball. Because the ball, you can't make the kind of hexagons, the wrong shape, or not straight lines. Because that is something that is actually got... A particular pattern but the pattern of grass and leaves is very natural so if you put the grass in the wrong place it's really not going to make any difference to your picture at the end so just play around with it again remembering this is your first layer it is going to look a hideous mess that's what we love just having it a big load of colors splaying all over the place that's what we're going to have at the start now because I'm going to do quite a few layers of the same stuff I'm actually, even when I'm doing my drying times, I'm going to be leaving all these colours and palettes because we're going to come back and use them again anyway. We're not using brand new colours for the next bit. So just put the make the edges kind of however you want them, you know, splay them out or have them really faded into the background, into the white. I'm only doing a very small study here because our classes have been reduced in time a little bit for COVID reasons. So I am actually just doing a smaller study rather than a full A4 sheet but you can see how it will still make a really beautiful picture at the end of this. And I'm bringing some more of that dark in to that background, neatening it up and adding little colours in. So in a minute you're going to see that I'm going to take the sticker off. This was done after all this was dry, so you've got to wait for all of this first layer to dry. 
and then we're going to pop the sticker off and now you've got a lovely white space now the first thing i'm going to do is get the general shadow of the base of the ball so i'm going to make up a really kind of browny yellow ochre color to fill the entire ball in and then i'm going to bring that shadow all down the left hand side so you're going to see i fill the entire ball in because none of this ball is really white it's kind of a dirty old disgusting ball i might have left some of it white if it was like a brand new shiny white football but because it's kind of an old distressed football it's kind of faded to that kind of scummy yellow color so we're putting that in and then i'm going to start bringing in the shadow of it so i'm going to add a little bit of that cool blue to the brown and i'm going to bring that shadow in at the side there now i am going to leave the bottom because the ball is obviously on something we've got a perfect circle but the ball isn't just floating on top of the ground the ground is covering a small amount of that circular area so you can see there i'm leaving that and i'm going to bring in that yellow over the top of that when I do my next stage of leaves so that the ball is actually resting in the leaves rather than just floating on top of it. Little things like that are really important when you're trying to get something to look like it's on something rather than just like on top of it and it's not connected. It's really important when you're doing that with people or animals or anything when you're doing painting. So I think in a moment I kind of feel happy with the kind of shadows I've put in. I will bring it a lot heavier and darker as I add the next layers but I'm just putting some kind of depth into it so that you can start to see it is spherical. The light source in this ball, it, on this ball is coming from the top right hand side so the bottom left hand side is going to be the darkest. Right so using those same colours like I said I didn't wash my, my uh, palette out I'm just going to re-wet them and I'm going to start just making some leaf forms. Now it's really quite tricky to follow this picture exactly because some of it's in focus, some of it's out of focus. So really just give yourself a little bit of artistic license, you know, bring that colour across the ball. Now you can see the ball is in something, but when you're doing the leaves, just kind of do some randomy shapes. We can make them look more like leaves later. So we're just going to put some different colours, some lights and darks. So I'm using some light yellows, some mid oranges, and then I will come in with some little brown tips of these leaves in a minute. And what I'm kind of trying to generally follow is the fact that it's a lot more out of focus at the front and then it goes into focus in that midsection where the ball is. So you can see across that midsection I'm going to actually make it a lot more in focus. I'm going to give little tips to my leaves there. And also I am going to come in with some greens in a second and start building up that grassy areas that's showing at the front. So it really is by eye at this point, you're just going to decide whether or not you're going to make it soft or more sharp, depending on what area you're in, and also just for what you feel looks correct. So I kind of came in with kind of a similar colour green to the green that I put on the grass, just to give myself a second layer of little grass strands, which I'm going to build up across that background so that the yellow bit behind, I'm going to make the grass strands go over the top of that and this will start to build up that grass and make it look more realistic. And I'm gonna do that across all those grassy areas that I've got on show. So you can see what I'm saying here about the fact that it doesn't really matter if the grass isn't exactly in the same shape as the one in the background. It really doesn't make much difference. You're still using that as your reference, even if the grass is in a slightly different area on your painting than it is on the picture it really doesn't matter that much so again I'm just building up some colors and some leaves and if I think they look too harsh I might soften them out with just a little bit of water and I'm just bringing those colors in to make it look a little bit more in focus just around that area So change up the colours, keep it really autumnal, so lots of browns, lots of oranges, lots of yellows. And I think I do soften out a lot of this in the foreground because this is where it's really, really kind of um, out of focus. So you can see how I come in with some water and soften that whole area out. And once you've put the water on there again, remember it will do the same effect as in the beginning anyway. So 
whilst you've wet it and you've softened it out there's no reason you can't come in with a different color and let that splay into it it will still be soft effect but you'll have another layer of soft colors so don't be shy to come in once you've kind of wet that whole area don't think oh i won't touch that just wet it and then add some more colors in there So you can see how it is slightly building up now. I'm starting to get those different layers in. And now what I'm going to do is make a really dark colour with my cool blue and my cool brown. And I'm going to start building up some shadows. So I'm going to build up the shadow around the base of the ball. And the shadows that are where the leaves are touching onto the ground or onto the grass or wherever they're touching and making the shadow. I'm just following it kind of for reference on the picture and also I'm going to bring in some shadows on the grass so I'm going to bring in some of this dark colour over the top of the light green we've already got on the grass to make the kind of shadowy effect of the grass too because obviously in between all the little blades there'll be dark little shoots coming through where there's shadows there so don't neglect that if you're putting the shadows in. So you can see now I'm starting to put some idea of shadows everywhere I can see them. And also, I, as you can just see there, I'm bringing some little strands across the ball. Now there isn't necessarily strands going across the ball in the picture, I just thought that really kind of solidified it into the picture there, by bringing little strands of grass going up across it. So I think I do come in and soften some of these and I do think I come in later and bring in another layer of green to soften the whole grass area because I think once I've done the kind of dark and the light I felt like the dark and the light green, the dark kind of shadowy colour and the light green were too opposing. So what I did do is just like washed over the entire green with another layer of green which just meant that you still had those individual strands showing but the whole area was a little bit darker. So you can do that, you can play around with it. You, it is light to dark with um, watercolours, but really you have got a little bit of leeway in it. You can soften areas if you feel like they come out too harsh. There's no reason why you can't. And also you'll see in a minute, I'll bring in all those light areas into the um, foliage on the floor as well. There's no reason you can't bring out the light again as you're going through. The only thing is, is you can't get that crisp light, like the circle that we put the sticker on that's a real crisp line around our light it's harder to get that crisp edge when you're taking watercolor out now when you are taking watercolor out it is really important to have a high um, level paper so that it's like 300 grams paper or more and it means that you have that availability to kind of scratch it out and take it out so here you'll see I'm going to start taking those little light areas out what I'm doing is adding water and I'm doing a little kind of back and forth rubbing motion however if it doesn't come out light enough all I'll do is dry my brush off and lift it out a bit more with the dry brush so once you've applied the water you can squeeze out your brush and go over the top of where you applied the water and that will lift it out even more so you can get really light areas like this like I said you can there's no reason you can't take out little areas so here you'll see I'll add the water and I'm making those little kind of round circular things that are where the lights coming through the tree and right now I'm squeezing off the brush in between each one so I'm adding the water and I'll squeeze the brush off between my fingers and then take up that water with the, with the brush. Now I think I add more of these later because I think they looked a little lost just having a couple on there. I was going to only do a couple but then I felt like they just looked a bit bizarre, just a few on their own. So I think I added more towards the end. And again, it's all a work in progress. You can change it up. You can add things and take things away as you're going along. It's your picture at the end of the day. If you didn't even want to do these little circular bits and you just like that kind of soft, focusy background and you didn't want these kind of light spots coming through, then don't do them. It's entirely your own picture. I think it works particularly well on the leaves coming in. It really made them kind of 3D and pop out. So as you can see here, when I'm taking some of the light sources up, off these leaves it really does give them a much more 3D effect so I think that worked beautifully and in that mid layer of leaves in the background those little light spots really work well so 
it's a work in progress with how you use it. I quite liked how the light spots looked in the background, but I feel like they are quite bizarre if you haven't seen the actual main picture and you didn't know what the source was, that there's just these big circles in the background, but I still quite like it. I think it's quite interesting. So now I'm just adding some more darks into that background. And again, I always run out of the blue. So here's where I'm bringing that green across those areas and I'm just kind of filling them in a bit. Because now I can see the picture coming together, I can see that I wanted that to be all a little bit darker, that whole green area. So I'm kind of washing some of that green colour over the entire lot and softening it all out a bit because it was a little bit too stripy for my liking. And you can see how that, I think that works really well. It actually makes those leaves at the front look very soft focus now. Right, so now what I've done is I have lightly drawn, you can just about see it in pencil, the shapes on there. The reason being that if you go straight in with paint and you muck it up, you're going to know about it. So lightly draw, and then you'll see now that I do turn the paper when it gets a little bit tricky, when I feel like I can't do that stripe, because I'm doing very fine work at the moment, when I'm trying to get fine lines, if they're straight, I know that my hands kind of work better in one direction. So what I do is I kind of twist it round. Now this is just to give me my basic shape of all these little things, putting these lines on. You can always soften these out later. But the reason I'm doing this, and then I will stop and I will erase, I'll let it all dry, and I'll erase those lines that I did in pencil, and then it will be all ready to kind of put some shadows on and build that up. So that's it, I've done all the little lines. I'm gonna leave that to dry. And then what I've done is erase the pencil marks, and now what I'm gonna do is make a really, really pale brown, and I'm gonna start building up that kind of shape of the shadow to make these look like they're 3D forms, these little kind of hexagons. They're not just one kind of ball that's got that pattern painted on it. It actually is stitching, so it makes it go 3D in and out. So I'm bringing in some much more darker color when I go around to the bottom there, to the bottom left, because we know that's where our shadows are. And then when we come up to the top right, it will basically just be very, very fine, light, whitewashed, out brown pigment so that it's hardly any because that's obviously the lightest point of our ball. So I'm trying to follow the ball a little bit but again artistic license is allowed. I'm not putting the pattern on the ball on this but you could easily put the pattern on. I just didn't do it because I know that we're probably not going to have enough time to sit and fiddle about with putting patterns on. Maybe some of my quicker students in the class will be able to um, fully do all the patterns and everything but I need to do a picture that is pretty easy for most of them to kind of get done. So you can see now I'm just popping out some of those little shapes and I'm adding a small amount of colour and then pushing it around with kind of a damp brush. And I think the last thing I do is just bring some more of those little kind of bleach dots out in the background, right there. I thought, I think I did one that went over another one and I think that worked particularly well. So it's like actually kind of on top of another one, which is just there. Because I feel like when they're all individual, they don't look quite as natural, but when you put them kind of half on top of each other, that actually does seem to work a bit better. But like I said, you don't have to put them in. They are a bit bizarre, but I kind of like them. I think they're quite interesting. And now I can see the picture a bit more. I can come in and just separate them out into little individual leaves if I feel like I want to. And that's basically it, your finished picture. I hope you enjoyed it, guys. See you next time. Bye.